Pop.com. We're going to be doing another Taylor polynomial problem today. This one asks us to compute the nth degree Taylor polynomial of the following function f of x equals e to the negative x squared. Um, and they ask us to compute it about a when a equals 0 and n equals 4. Uh, and then simplify the coefficients as much as possible. Okay, so they asked us to compute the nth degree Taylor polynomial and they've said that n equals 4. So we're looking for the fourth degree Taylor polynomial about a, which they've given us as 0. So the first thing we want to do with a Taylor polynomial problem pretty much always is to go ahead and construct the uh, following table. It's going to have four columns. The first column is k, the second column is f, I never remember how to, what the headings on the columns are, uh, fk of x, the last one is f, or sorry, the third one is fk of a, and the fourth one is fk of a divided by k factorial. So um, these are our four columns and we're going to build ourselves a table and then use the values in the table to construct the polynomial at the end. So we always start with a table like this. The first, uh, we always want to address the first column, k, first. And k, I don't really know why they picked k. Basically all we do is start with uh, zero. You always start with zero here, so go ahead and always put zero first. And then you just number down until you get to whatever number n is equal to. So in this case, four. So zero, one, two, three, four. If n equals six, you'd number uh, down to six, but in this case, it's just four. So zero, one, two, three, four. And then uh, the original function always goes in this first row here e to the negative x squared. So that always goes in the first row. And then what we're going to do is take the derivative of this function and put the derivative here in, in the second row um, next to the 1. Then we'll take the derivative again and it'll go in row 2, again and in row 3. So that takes a little while um, to take the derivatives, but let's go ahead and do that now. So First we're going to take the derivative here of e to the negative x squared. So you're going to be using a lot of uh, chain rule and probably also product rule in this problem. Um, let's go ahead and, and take the first derivative. So the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x, it doesn't change at all. So whenever you're taking the derivative of the value of e raised to an exponent, you're always going to, to leave it alone, e to the negative x squared. So we don't do anything. Um, the problem is this negative x squared is more complicated than just x. If it were just e to the x, the derivative would be e to the x and you'd be done. You wouldn't have to worry about it. When it's more complicated, when this exponent is more complicated than just x, you need to use chain rule um, to take the derivative. So first, we leave it alone as you would if you just had e to the x. But then, because this is more complicated, we have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent itself. So the derivative of negative x squared would be negative 2x, right? So we have to multiply by negative 2x. So then, of course, that would simplify to negative 2x e to the negative x squared. So that is uh, the first derivative, and we can go ahead and put that here, negative 2xe to the negative x squared. We're going to need all this room, so. Okay, so that's the first derivative. Now we take the derivative again. Um, in this case, though, not only will we have to use chain rule again like we did with the first derivative, but we're going to need to use product rule, and we'll treat these two terms separately. So we'll deal with 2x 
and then e to the negative x squared. So when, you, you, when you're using a product rule, we'll call this f of x and this g of x. Remember with product rule that you do, you can do it in either order, but you know, f of x left alone and then uh, g prime of x or the derivative of g of x plus uh, the derivative of f of x and then leaving g of x alone. So that's product rule. So in this case, um, we'll call this, so f of x is negative 2x, so we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. It's going to be negative 2x. And then we need the derivative of e to the negative x squared, which we've already determined, right, is negative 2x e to the x, negative x squared. So we'll do negative 2x e to the negative x squared. So that's uh, the derivative of g of x. And then we say plus, following our formula here, the derivative of f of x. So the derivative of negative 2x is just negative 2. And then g of x just left alone. So e to the negative x squared. e to the negative x squared. So now we can simplify. We don't need these anymore. So we can go ahead and simplify this. So we're looking at uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So 4x squared with the x and the x, so that's x squared, e to the negative x squared. And then since we have plus a negative, that's just minus 2e to the negative x squared. And we can factor out uh, an e. Let me make sure I have the same thing here. We could factor out uh, some of these terms, like we could factor out a 2 or a negative 2. We could factor out e to the negative x squared. Um, I think, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and, let's just go ahead and leave it alone for now. I think it's the simplest way. So let's just call this uh, 4x squared e to the negative x squared minus 2e to the negative x squared. Okay, so, so that's our second derivative. Um, our third derivative, so we're going to go ahead and deal with this 4x squared e to the negative x squared first, and we'll forget about this term here. So this again is going to be product rule with this 4x squared as one term and it's e to the negative x squared as another. So we'll call this f of x and we'll call this g of x. So we're going to do f of x. Um, we'll do the derivative of that first. The derivative of 4x squared is 8x. And then we would just leave this alone. So e to the negative x squared. And then plus um, leaving this alone now, leaving f of x alone, 4x squared, and taking the derivative of g of x, which we know is this uh, negative 2x e to the negative x squared. So that is the derivative of this first term here, and now we just need to take the derivative of the negative 2e to the negative x squared. So in that case, we will have, uh, we'll first have to leave it alone, um, leave this exponent alone here. So negative 2e to the negative x squared, but then we need to multiply, uh, based on chain rule, by the derivative of the exponent itself. So we would multiply that by negative 2x, which is the derivative of this negative x squared here. So negative 2x.